Well, thank you, everybody. I'm really looking forward to uh, spending some days with you. As you, you might, some of you might remember, uh, Susan and I were here last year. And uh, it's really thanks to John that we're here and um, really pleased to be on the program as well. So about 18 months ago, I guess, John reached out with the concept of the International Association of, sorry, International Alliance of Research Library Associations. And it's, uh, it's great to get together at this international level. And I have to say that I think it really has influenced um, the thinking in Canada and um, what we're going to be talking about today with the Canadian Roadmap for Advancing Scholarly Communications. And John's talk earlier today, too, where he was mentioning the Research Library Commons is certainly um, a theme throughout all of this, where really, I think what we're thinking of is we've called it a global knowledge commons. So I'll talk about the context and rationale for all of this and um, tell you a little bit about the roadmap objectives. And then Susan is going to uh, run through three of our areas that we're focusing on. Uh, we're in extra repositories this morning when there was a comment about no fire alarms are planned. We actually had a fire alarm at our, <laughs> our event for repositories. So I'm hoping that this uh, doesn't evoke that here. Okay, so first of all, just a little bit about CARL. Um, as you might know, we are uh, Canada's 31 largest research libraries. 29 of those are in academic libraries in our research intensive uh, universities. And we have two federal institutions, the Li Library and Archives Canada and the National Research Council's uh, National Science Library. So we are not really a service organization in the sense of uh, doing licensing, for example. We have the Canadian Research Knowledge Network that does that aspect of our work. Um, what we are is really a leadership organization that's trying to think of ways that we can really enhance our members' capacity and leadership in this, uh, in this environment and to promote a, a public policy environment in which libraries, research, and open scholarship will thrive. So it's really that open scholarship theme that we're talking about here today. And a little bit about Canada. I'm sure many of you recognize our uh, Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. Uh, we had a change in government um, in 2015, and it really made a huge difference in our uh, research library landscape. We went from feeling that really science and, and research were not high on the agenda to feeling that they really are. And we've seen an inc increased investment in research. We um, have a national science advisor, which is great. <laughs> Um, open government was actually a concept that did begin with an earlier government, but it really has teeth now, and we've seen things like the reinstatement of the long-form census, which we all applauded. And there's multiple consultations underway. We're waiting for the results of the fundamental science review. There's an innovation agenda that we've been able to feed into with our thoughts about digital infrastructure. Um, Canadian Heritage is looking at Canadian content in a digital age. And um, John mentioned the Leadership Council on Digital Infrastructure that I'm a member of as the president of CARL. It's a really interesting group in thinking about the difference between Canada and the UK. We haven't had something like JISC. We haven't had, um, at a national level, a group that brings us together to think about things like our high-speed networks or our compute capacity or how we manage research data. So we've been working in the last while with this group to try and map that landscape and to think about ways that really we need to speak with one voice, I think is the theme that um, the Minister of Science has certainly asked us to do, uh, to really affect change in this environment. So it's a useful landscape. And I should say too that um, really it is this sense of openness, I think, that gives us a lot of optimism. So this is um, Trudeau's cabinet. And uh, we were all very pleased when he announced it about the gender, um, equity, diversity, and very well qualified, which was nice. So just a couple of examples here. You have uh, the Minister of Innovation, Science, and Ec Economic Development in the red turban there. You have uh, in the green dress um, our Environment and Climate Change Minister, who is a lawyer. So we have a very well qualified cabinet and a sense of people who really um, care about what is going to happen in our landscape. Um, at the, so that's the national level, and then at the level of our own institutions, we have very encouraging commentary. Uh, one of my favorite administrators is the president at uh, McMaster University. He used to be at Queen's, which is why he's one of my favorites. Um, but he, he wrote in the media last week this, this headline, Parochialism and Protectionism are the Enemies of Enlightenment. And he just went on with a very nice thought piece saying, our universities, like our society, are only enriched and strengthened by diversity of opinions, academic disciplines, and people. We commit ourselves to protecting the free flow of ideas and to opposing hatred and intolerance in all its forms. So this is the landscape that we're in. We're feeling um, optimistic about Canada being open and about Canada having a real pride in that openness. So, um, uh, getting now down to this uh, 
scholarly communications roadmap. About a year ago, uh, Carl put out a white paper um, called Canadian Universities and Sustainable Publishing. And I was thinking about this in the Lieber presentation about just that word sustainable and how we were actually pretty deliberate in using that. We certainly are envisioning an open environment, but we wanted to emphasize that we understand that our role is truly make that sustainable. We also just wanted to think about this sort of transformative moment that we felt we were in, where a lot has happened with uh, various converging factors, with digital technology, uh, with libraries playing a greater role in that technology, things like um, hosting open journal systems, um, the move towards policies for open access. We had just seen uh, that happen in Canada. And then this pressure, um, I think when, when John was talking about um, Ross Atkinson, this, this struck me, that this growing pressure of the oligopoly of international academic publishers and the financial constraints of university budgets. So I gave a lot of talks about this paper over the last year and uh, to people in my own university, various groups, um, and also to a couple of national groups of vice principals research and provosts. And what I always found was interesting was that it was this slide that impressed them the most. And this is because it's all about the money. And uh, you, you can all do this slide in your institutions, I'm sure, where this is my own institution saying that almost half of our acquisitions budget is spent on the big five. So Elsevier, Wiley, Taylor and Francis, Springer and Sage are in the small uh, pie graph on the right. And this was just to say that this is not in our control. Uh, we actually are, are in this big deal environment where those costs continue to rise and to eat up our flexibility. So this seemed to resonate, and it certainly resonated with our Senate and others, and I'm, I'm hoping that it resonates as we enter um, Plan B, which I'd actually like to call Plan A, I think. <laughs> So uh, following the white paper, as I said, we uh, engaged with a number of different groups. Um, there was some interest in developing a statement of principles. We're still optimistic that um, that will come out of our, our provost group. Um, each of our institutions, I think, is doing the same kind of thing that I'm doing, where we're raising awareness. Interesting was the Canadian publisher's reaction of uh, a fear of being painted with the same brush as, um, as the Big Five. And uh, what, you know, our reaction to that was, don't worry, what we're trying to do is actually build a sustainable environment for Canadian publishing. We want Canadian publishers to survive. So all of that encouragement led to the idea of the roadmap. And um, this was something we started in uh, July last year, just with a small working group to uh, really sort of try, tie together these ideas in a way that felt very systematic. So basically we want to have this vision of open, sustainable, effective, and innovative scholarly communication system. <coughs> very importantly, governed and managed by the scholarly community, and that reflects a substantial role for Canadian academic libraries. So yes, what value do libraries add to this? So um, really, essentially, our, our thinking here is that we want to collaborate with other stakeholders in Canada, um, identify, support, and support and promote ideas with other regions, um, like you, uh, working to change cultures and local practices, and then launching pilot projects, and Susan's going to talk about a few of those as a way to really um, do something very concrete in this landscape. So I won't, of course, have time to talk about um, each of the objectives, but just wanted to put them up on the screen and say this is only a five-page document, uh, very easy and accessible to read. Um, I'll give you one example of, of how we drill down. So the number three, lower the economic barriers to the creation and dissemination of academic publications. We also have an action plan that we're working on that... Um, has for that item three things. We're going to develop a rationale for why this is important and share that with our CARL members. We're going to develop a framework for sharing licensing costs in the Canadian context. So we have two members who have done this routinely and we want to learn from that and encourage others to do that. And then create and publish a joint statement about transparency and licensing perhaps as part of um, ERLA. So um, I think I'm going to leave it there, but just to say that we realize that none of um, these elements is in itself groundbreaking, but we feel that uh, deep systemic challenges need to be addressed in a methodical manner uh, from these multiple angles and through incremental steps. And we were encouraged in the IARLA meetings yesterday to think about um, how we might use this to compare what each of our associations is doing. Just basically, what are we doing in these five areas and how could we work together to affect some um, disruptive change? Uh, yeah, so I speak to a, a few example activities that advance uh, the roadmap objectives. Um, so as Martha mentioned, in the area of uh, sustainable, affordable, and preferably open access, um, there are activities on the IRS front, on the licensing part, and on this notion of supporting homegrown uh, publishing. 
Um, so in terms of uh, what would be roadmap item 3.4, the wording is there on the screen, um, we held a national forum late last fall and it was um, held in association with um, a manager's a, a repository managers meeting as well. So one day was repo repository managers meeting and the, and the next day was a directors plus one. So it was all the Carl directors and the managers together. Um, a really good meeting actually and it was done in, in conjunction with CORE. And, uh, and so in terms of outcomes, um, there were certainly two major areas identified for repository development. They're not particularly surprising. Uh, improve the functionality of repositories, uh, with a focus on interoperability and interconnectedness and support and encourage the development of value-added services, so, so services on top of repositories um, such as peer review and uh, usage method measures and tools. Uh, so some specific ideas that we will now be pursuing, uh, we will certainly be doing something with uh, metrics um, and I learned a little bit about that this morning in the, at the uh, at the um, Research Libraries Partnership meeting, so that was good. Um, we are going to start a small group that will um, will consider that. Uh, we're going to look at uh, best practices for collection development. So see, you know, whether they're all on the same page, whether they're sort of um, uh, there are anything to be learned in terms of uh, strengthening the content that's in the repositories. Uh, we will look at the notion of a national aggregation service. We don't have that at the moment. We do have a comprehensive landscape of, of repositories, but, uh, but nothing bringing them together for access and discovery. Um, and we're going to look to strengthen the community of practice. And one of the things that I would say this day did achieve was a sort of reinvigoration of a, of a, of a, of a institutional repositories managers community that was maybe feeling a little tired with open access. It's hard work. And, uh, and, uh, and so I think it was really good for that. So, um, um, certainly CORE sort of felt that this was a model day and, and, uh, and the, the documentation for it, the report and so on are available on our website. Um, in terms of scholarly communications working group, so this is um, the second initiative that we thought we should mention in terms of, it, because it has a collaboration aspect to it. Um, so this is working, uh, the, the notion is to work with Canadian journals to develop and, and uh, assess and adopt sustainable open access funding models. Um, so here we convened a multi-stakeholder uh, group and, and sort of asked them to establish a shared vision, principles and goals that will act as a framework for advanced, robust, sustainable, collaborative um, models in the, in the dissemination of the Canadian scholarly record. So I, I, I should say that in Canada um, we have some solid support for especially journal publishing um, in our, at the moment. Uh, we host at, at Simon Fraser University um, PKP Open Journal Systems um, and have a long experience there with uh, John Alinsky and, and, and um, that approach to open access. Um, we have uh, out of Quebec um, a, a platform called RUD, which is providing, um, a long, it's a long standing platform for, for Quebec, mainly French language journals in the social sciences humanities, but with a growing, uh, a, a growing uh, list of, of journals. And uh, the federal government has recently invested quite heavily in in um, to, uh, to in uh, RUD to uh, to a value of three point five million pounds. So. Um, uh, and we have a we have a science publisher, Canadian Science Publishing, that that is sort of fairly innovative and looking towards. Um, some open access. We have 15 university presses, two of them now uh, being fully open access and other sort of experimenting. So it, we, we, we brought everybody together and, uh, and, uh, and what we see I think is that the key accomplishment really at this point, and it's only in process, it's issued a, uh, an interim report, is, is that simply the sort of reestablishment of, of, of trust and dialogue and getting to know each other again because uh, open access is kind of tricky on both sides and the, the, the conversation got a little bit uh, fraught and um, and so it's been really good for, for information sharing and, and uh, what they're trying to do, uh, they've looked carefully at some of the initiatives and trying to assess whether um, there are initiatives that could sort of accelerate um, the transition to open access. Um, so we've looked at whether a, a scholarly publishing cooperative would make sense perhaps as an evolution of ARD and PKP working together. 
um, whether you're extending the license, we have a licensing um, approach to RUD through CRKN at the moment, uh, whether Scope 3 is a model, they look carefully at all of these things. Uh, so the group has issued an interim report outlining principles at this point. Uh, they, uh, they might not seem like much, but, uh, but they are progress in point of fact. So they have outlined six principles. Uh, Nonprofit, so the notion everybody agrees on pretty much, is to uh, reinvest um, you know, revenues back into the system. Uh, high quality, so very much supporting the notion of peer review and so on. Made in Canada insofar as nurturing official languages and trying again to, to draw on, on the strengths that we have. Uh, building on strength is another one. Um, and maximizing openness. So we have a little trouble with the notion of OA as a, as a term to carry forward. The publishers don't necessarily see that entirely, but we keep sort of saying, well, we're really aiming that way, and this is sustainable publishing in an open access context. So we don't know really whether the discussions will coalesce around something you know, new and, and bold, but, uh, um, but it's a sort of case of nothing ventured, nothing gained, and we, we do see that there is, uh, there's been value in bringing, bringing together the communities in, in a collaborative sense. Uh, the last initiative we thought to mention um, is, is a big one for us. Uh, let me just change my slide, there we go. Uh, Portage, which is our initiative related to um, research data management. So in, this, in the roadmap, it's, it's a relatively small thing in our lives. It's actually a relatively big thing. And, and uh, um, we have a, a director. Um, we have attracted uh, new funding from our members, specifically for Portage, to sustain it for a couple of more years as we try to um, position it in, in the landscape and, and attract the funding that it, it requires. Uh, so Portage generally it was meant to build capacity and build some infrastructure uh, that is uh, well positioning libraries for their role in research data management in our country. So we are working with a whole bunch of stakeholders and it's kind of neat to, so we have it in our, in our, um, in our steering committee and uh, advisory committee and also just in a whole bunch of, in fact, it's the same members who are at the leadership council that Martha mentioned earlier. So high capacity, the high capacity network organization, the high performance computing organization, national associations of research administrators and ethics boards, uh, our four regional library consortia, our granting councils, and in fact, even the DCC is there because we, we released a tool um, uh, called DMP Assistant and that was based on um, the, the uh, DCC uh, data management planning tool. Um, so the, at the top left on the corner is uh, the Leadership Council. Martha's talked about that, so I won't. But, uh, but one of the things that's really interesting is that whilst uh, the government is going to invest in research infrastructure, we're almost positive. And, uh, and what's interesting is that uh, what you've seen is because of Portage, because it's well articulated, um, the library uh, voice at the table is a, is a very respected one. And, and, and we're beginning to feel that there's, you know, there's really is hope that we will, that we as a as a community will get some money, and that we'll sort out sort of which organization and what's it called, and 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 well, how does the government governance play out, and so on. So, uh, okay. So Portage goals: so foster a community of practice. Um, uh, you know, build a, do some development of RDM infrastructure and engage and advocate for RDM with stakeholder communities. Those are the goals, and I'm just going to say a little bit about developments in each of those. So in terms of community of practice, uh, we have expert groups active at the moment on, on planning, on training, on curation, on discovery, on preservation, and what we're calling research intelligence, which is more or less just understanding the research community and what it needs. Um, we, have a, we have a training program in development. We've hired a half-time training officer. Um, and the, and uh, we have about 60 professionals uh, deployed and playing, uh, playing different roles in these, in these groups. And we're involved uh, with Compute Canada. They brought um, $1.3 million, no, $1.3 million pound investment to the table uh, to develop a, a kind of preservation pipeline and the first big uh, part of infrastructure that we need for the country. And uh, so our experts are, are more sort of contributing expertise to this process and uh, preservation, curation, discovery groups are all contributing. So that um, is, uh, is making quite good progress. In terms of infrastructure, that's really the second thing on this list that I, that I mentioned. So that is the Federated Research Data Repository. 
It's joint software development, as I mentioned, and it will have some, some really good core features. Uh, um, it's sort of already at alpha, sta alpha uh, stage for testing. Um, a federated storage model, a federated support model, um, it will be nationally integrated, it will be scalable, it will have a good discovery layer, um, it will provide a preservation workflow, um, it will be suitable for a broad range of data types, it will be available to uh, for researchers to use directly or through the libraries, um, it will have uh, uh, both data and metadata ingestion and access control mechanisms, so that is the the, the big uh, infrastructure undertaking that we have right, right now. Uh, we have uh, got quite a lot of mileage out of the DMP assistance, assistant already, and that is, like I mentioned, a, a lot of thanks to the DCC for that. Um, and we have a project now um, for what we're calling Dataverse, Dataverse North. Um, and thirdly, on the community engagement side of things, um, it's been really interesting that Chuck Humphrey, our director of Portage, he's a, a well-known expert in, in, uh, in, in data management in our country, and, and he ha he, we've ended up having um, contracts with the funding agencies to test um, piloting, uh, piloting the use of, of, uh, of the data management planning tool within the context of funded research, and, um, and also you know, getting... getting um, uh, some training modules in as well. So it's been really good for, um, for the respect between the, the government officials that are funding research and their, their respect for libraries has been really useful that way. Uh, there is a, a working group just starting on the ethical treatment of data and, um, and there's some work being done to look to uh, tie DMP through the, administra the research application process. Um, we have some work as well going on that we're participating in. A whole, a whole bunch of organizations are collaborating now as well to start up an ORCID consortium. So, um, and then I mentioned the the, uh, the the leadership council again. So there, there's a Portage website. It has mm, some of our key documents and some of the guidance and the access to the assistant assistant, and it will eventually have access to the the federated uh, research data repository as well. So um, in conclusion, I, I think what we would say is that we're, we're seeing the roadmap as a way of framing, structuring, prioritizing, and hopefully accelerating or driving our activities uh, as we try to shape the broad, complex, and multifaceted uh, challenge of scholarly communication. But it has a big dependency on how well we can collaborate. <laughs>